and welcome to this week's video. Coming up in this week's video, some Hendrix. Some Eric Clapton on a Van Halen guitar. Some maybe inappropriate funky guitar on an Elvis gig. And some definitely inappropriate funky guitar on an Elvis gig. Now, as you may be able to hear, I've got the post-Christmas winter lurgy, some sort of cold. Luckily, I haven't got to sing this weekend. And this is the first gig diary of 2024. Already had a couple of gigs this year, which is good. Uh, January can be a bit quiet, but this January is looking quite good. Now, this first gig I'm going to show you I have two reasons to be very excited about this. Now the first one is it's the first time I've properly used my EVH Frankenstein guitar in anger. I did use it on a gig a few a couple of weeks ago, just before Christmas, uh, which I showed on one of my previous videos. Um, but I was having technical problems, so this was the first gig I got to use it properly. And I've done a review on that guitar, so I'll do a link to that here. And the second reason is I've bought one of these. Now what this is, is a digital PA desk. Now, I've had a PA system for about whoa, 20, nearly 25 years, and it was one of the best investments as a professional musician I ever made. It was very expensive when I bought it. I bought some nice JBL speakers and a Dynacord desk, and it's paid for itself so many times over, because by having the PA, you can get paid extra for just turning up on the gig. Now, it is a bit of a pain, and I'm actually I'm fed up with doing PA systems generally, <laughs> but I bought this one because it does something that I've wanted to be able to do for absolutely years and this particular desk does it very neatly indeed. So when I bought my first PA about 25 years ago it has one monitor send. When I first started gigging we didn't even have monitors at all, you'd have your two speakers out the front and the singer would just hear themselves off that. But as time's gone on and technology's improved, people want to hear themselves better, and in a lot of cases, the whole band want to be using in-ear monitors, which on my previous desk is completely impossible because it's only got one send. So this new digital desk has six sends, um, which enables six people to have their own monitor mixes. And because it's digital, you can have your own apps, you can control your own monitor mix. Brilliant. So that was one reason I got this desk. But the main reason is, with this desk, you can just hit record at the start of the gig at the end of the gig you've got files for each instrument that you can just then import into your computer and mix so this week that is what you're going to hear you're going to hear proper mixed audio because prior to that all the audio that um, I show on my gig diaries has just been the audio off the camera which is good for certain things but it does depend where the camera is and it's it's not that clear but I'm really really pleased with how these recordings have come out on the new desk the first song I was going to show you I'm not going to it's a Hendrix song playing on my Strat but I'm going to save that right to the end of the video so you have to watch to the end if you want to see that and I'd also like to say hello to Adrian who watches my channel apparently and he came along to this gig to watch and his band were playing there the next night so Hello Adrian, and thank you for coming. I've also, now my daughter's friends, two of my daughter's friends, Sam and Ruben, apparently they say they watch my videos every week, but I'm not sure if they do. So if you see this, Sam and Ruben, tell Ellie that you've watched it. This is a test. So the first song I'm gonna show you is Move On Up by Curtis Mayfield, and I'm playing my Strat, my custom shop Strat. It's a 56 Closet Classic, and I'm playing it through my car amplifier, and Basically, I've got a Sennheiser, I think it's a 609, one of those square microphones that you just dangle over the front of the amp. And I'm really quite pleased with the sound of it. Um, we had a couple of overhead mics on the drums, one in the bass drum, one on the snare, and a DI from the bass, and my vocal mic, and that was pretty much it. So see what you think of the audio on this. Um, this is Move On Up by Curtis Mayfield. Your folks might understand you by and by.
Now this next song is Crossroads, it's a cream version, I know it's originally by Robert Johnson, um, it's the cream version, and uh, I'm playing this, my Frankenstrat, now playing Clapton on an Eddie Van Halen guitar, now I know Clapton was a uh, big influence on Eddie Van Halen, but I really enjoyed playing this guitar, so it's again, it's through my car amp, and I've got a exotic SL drive to give me that kind of super lead sound, so I had that on the whole time, I did the whole set on that guitar pretty much, um, I just set the one sound to make it sound martially, and then playing with the volume knob, because that's all you've got on that guitar, with the one pickup, and it really did everything I wanted it to do, and I'm enjoying the limitations of that guitar, I was thinking of wiring up the front pickup, but I'm not sure I will now, so anyway, check this out, see what you think of this, this is... Uh, my kind of version of the uh, cream version of Robert Johnson's song Crossroads. the audio on these tracks I'm really quite pleased with it and it's got me to thinking and I would like to get some feedback on this I'm thinking of maybe releasing some live albums onto streaming platforms because I'm not sure anybody's particularly doing this if I can release some live albums or EPs of these gigs and I'll start doing some original stuff as well as covers whether people would listen to them then they'll appear on YouTube mu music as well and maybe on in certain instances I do video them as you've just seen is uh, put the videos out on YouTube as well. It does depend on copyright with YouTube. It's very difficult working out whether you're going to get a copyright strike or not, as you may have said on some of my previous videos. But anyway, let me know if you'd be interested in hearing these full tracks um, where you can stream the audio on Spotify or Apple Music, wherever you get your tracks from. So moving on to the next gig, this was the next night, and this was playing with an Elvis tribute called Suspiciously Elvis that I've been playing with him since about 2006 and it's very enjoyable but this is the first time we played at this venue but it's the same venue that I did the support for Big Country and Nick Kershaw last year so I'm familiar with the venue because the first time I played there with Suspiciously Elvis and again I had another new piece of technology here which made the gig all the more exciting um, I got this for my birthday hang on that was very kindly bought for me by Roger who was my guitar teacher growing up who I still uh, see very regularly and speak to very regularly um, and anything about guitars I still have to ask him <laughs> thought now I'm 50 as in a few weeks ago I'd know enough about guitars not to have to ask someone else but Roger knows so much more about guitars than I do that I'm always asking about stuff but he got me this um, which is a switcher it's an ABY switcher so I can switch between two amps or have both of them on at the same time and it's got a, uh, a ground lift and a phase thing and it's got this sort of variable, um, I think it's impedance to make you, your output on here match what it would be like if you're plugging the guitar straight in the amp. And it's absolutely brilliant. It was the first time I got to use it. I'd used it at home and tested it, but it's the first gig I'd managed to use it on. And the setup, and I'm going to show you here the sort of comparison between the two amps. It's not a great sound because it's off my phone and 
the uh, band are all talking and the drummer's playing, but I've got my car amp, and the way I had it set was you can defeat part of the tone stack on it to make it slightly more driven and middly, although it wasn't loud enough to really drive. But So I had that sounding a bit more middly, and I had my Milkman amp next to it, which is very toppy and clean, and the two of them together I thought sounded really nice. So here's just a little video, and I'm pointing at the amp that I'm playing through so you can see. And then just another little clip, I'm just playing away in a bit of country stuff so you can hear both the amps working together. So I'm just going to show you some of my favourite bits from the gig. Um, I really played well on this gig, sometimes I struggle with the uh, Elvis stuff because you've kind of got to limit yourself to the playing in the James Burton style but I kind of went a bit off piece encouraged by Elvis because um, I did some bits on the gig before Christmas and he liked the bits I was adding some kind of funky bits but this first track I'm going to play you this was, actually wasn't on our set this it's Devil in Disguise and we would he was just saying what do you want to hear and they were shouting songs out and because of the band we've all been doing it for so long we know most of the songs so Devil in Disguise which wasn't on the set list but we just threw it in and it has a guitar solo in it and I was quite pleased with what I did on this one it's a kind of country thing which I've got a bit of slap back echo on it which comes off my Eventide H9 which I think is a slap echo off the um, Eventide H9000 algorithm or whatever it is so if you're interested and that's into the two amps as I say so check this one out <laughs> song is one that we've only just started doing recently because it was in the film which I'm embarrassed to say I still haven't seen I must watch it um, I do like Elvis and having done this Elvis tribute for such a long time I really should watch the film I just haven't had time um, but this apparently is quite a big feature in the film and it's kind of you know this song wasn't particularly well known before but it has been since the film but it's got loads of wah wah guitar in and I did a solo and it's again not very James Burton-y but I was quite pleased with the way it came out I'd also on the first set I've got a um, a Japanese Paisley Telecaster which I use because it's the James Burton guitar but I have to say I swapped it over for my Danny Gatton Telecaster because it's a much nicer guitar to play um, I swapped over to that halfway through the first set so all these clips are on the Danny Gatton Telecaster so check this one out this is called I think it's I've got a feeling in my body I don't even know what it's called so this is just my solo in that <laughs> And the last clip I'm going to show you, this is Polk Salad Annie, and this was the one I was doing these kind of funky stuff just before Christmas. And afterwards, there's a reviewer, a photographer there called Ian Bourne, who has a website called Scene Sussex, where he does reviews of local music gigs and stuff. And he did he's done a very nice review of the gig, which I shall link to here. And I'm going to read to you what he wrote about me, because I'm very pleased about this. It says, Polk Salad Annie was up next. I have to give Tom Walker on guitars a shout. His guitar work for this one was stunning, as it was for Mystery Train and Tiger. Now, unfortunately, the battery on my GoPro ran out for Mystery Train, because I have to say, I did play a really good solo on that, but nobody's ever going to know whether that's true. Um, and if I watch it back, I might think it's rubbish. But it felt good at the time. But anyway, I did get the one, uh, the rhythm playing I was doing for Polk Salad and Annie, and Ian came up to me at the end of the gig and went, oh, I love what you were doing there. So that's why he's written it in the review. So this is what it is, and I've got the phaser on, um, again, on my Eventide. So this is a kind of phaser setting. I've got to give it that kind of funky sound. So... Not really what probably James Burton would have done, it's more like Noel Rogers playing with Elvis. But anyway, check this out, see what you think. Well, I hope you 
hope you enjoyed the video just a couple of gigs this week um, I am planning to do a video comparing my two Van Halen guitars which I know some people have written in the comments they're very interested in so please leave me a comment let me know what you think about the audio recordings hit like and hit subscribe if you haven't already and I'm going to leave you with this video at the end here this is Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix um, which I showed a little clip of right at the top of the video um, with some more multi-track recorded audio check this out and I'll hopefully see you next week.